Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep in the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my side until morning is nigh. Thee near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Our fourth Sunday in Advent, our fourth Sunday, our fourth Friday in Advent Reading from the Jesse Tree. In silence you watched, waited, yearned until your heart could break no more. So you came to us in a stable where no one noticed you. By a well where you welcomed the outsider. On a hillside where you fed the hungry. On a cross where you died for us. In love you came to us. In silence we watch, we wait, we yearn. Come, Lord Jesus, that we might rejoice again. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In this season of bumper-to-bumper stress with life more crowded than the stores, God welcomes us to a feast of faithfulness where we may sit in peace and gentleness. In these times of rancorous rants and snide remarks with people too busy to offer words of compassion, Jesus whispers of hope for broken hearts, sings carols of justice for all the outsiders. In these days with more and more time spent with devices and fewer fewer moments with those who could touch us with joy. The Spirit embraces us with peace that comforts, loves us with a passion beyond 140 characters. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 16. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so tonight we use the Jesse tree, the daily readings for Advent, and we come to Christmas Eve. And I'm encouraged to read Luke 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And this is the word of the Lord. And so we come to Tom Schumann's reflection on this text and for this Christmas Eve from the book, The Jesse Tree. Sing, choirs of angels, for this is the night when our peace comes, not as a prince, but a pauper. When God reaches down to wrap creation in ribbons of love and to place it in the kingdom. When God holds us to her breast and feeds us everlasting life. When God lets go of might in order to embrace the marginalised. When a baby gurgles our name, laughing and reaching out to grab our hands with his never to let go. Through sin, through denial, through rejection, through the hell of death, this is the night. Sing. The poem in the Jesse tree encourages us to sing. And I don't know about you, but I have many, many memories of carol services. It's carol services where I know all the words of the carols, where I hear again the readings and the images are just part of who I am. They take me back to my childhood and I can almost preempt the words. Uh, I remember as a child, I always had in my head when it said, and the shepherds came into the stable and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And as a small child, I had this image of all three of them lying in the manger. As I got older, I realised there was a comma there. But uh, but it's wondrous how we carry those stories with us and how they still have new and increasing meaning each time we hear them. So my wish for you this Christmas Eve is that as you hear carols, sing carols, as you celebrate, as you hear again the readings, that you may find joy and peace and time to reflect this Christmas on the message of the carols and the story this Christmas, on the strength of Mary, on the inclusion of the shepherds. Reflect on the humility of Joseph, the tenacity of the wise men. And for me, as we retell this story this year, I have heard anew the image, and it was in A Way in a Manger, as much as some of the images in A Way in a Manger kind of upset me because I can't imagine a child not crying. And Jesus was human as well as divine, and uh, and then some of the language I I find jarring now. But the idea that the cattle are lowing, 
and the hay is there and that Jesus is born into the midst of creation has really struck me this year. Maybe it's the, the whole climate change thing, but Jesus was born into the midst of creation. He, he, was, he was celebrated at first by shepherds on the hills, those who were living on the land. And for me, more than ever, this idea that Christ's birth is good news to all, it is, it is liberation, it is joy, but it is also an exhortation to care for the world and for all of creation. If ever there was a mandate for caring for the world, the fact that the Son of God was born into the wonders of creation should jolt us into action. Our Old Testament song is from um, Isaiah 11, 1 to 9. A shoot shall come out of the stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We remind ourselves again when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament song from Colossians 1. He is the image of the visible God, invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. With the thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created in him and through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So we come now with our time of prayer and I share initially uh, a prayer and then I will offer your uh, offer words for you to reflect on and some space for you to pray within. Firstly, we come giving thanks. We give you thanks, gracious and loving God, for this time together, for this community, for another year of walking with each other, albeit through difficult times. We give you thanks that we are here. We give you thanks for community, for light and life, and for possibility. We have wandered through the season of on confusion and uncertainty, architect of the universe, sometimes wondering if you were with us, sometimes discovering you in strangers and in neighbours we only nodded at before. In the deafening din of angry voices and the bitter accusations all around, you whisper of peace and justice to us. Peace who comes in the vulnerable. In these days which seem so barren, overflowing with the ashes of disappointment, you sing of that future held in love, where all your siblings are set free from hunger, homelessness, injustice and fear. 
When we wonder what tomorrow will bring, or if it will simply be the repeat of yesterday, you take us by the hand, Spirit who is with us, so that we may be reminded again that we are not forgotten. Help us as we seek to care for those the powerful despise. May we see the light of hope illuminating the way home to you. And may we live as your people and bringers of your kingdom. God, in community holy in one, remind us that in uncertainty we may trust in your presence, now and forever. Amen. We come with our prayers this Christmas Eve, especially praying today for the lonely, abused, neglected, for those not able to enjoy tomorrow, for those for whom tomorrow is not Christmas Day, the day where love came down to earth, but is just another repetition of the same old, same old, or the sadness or the pain. We pray for the ill, the grieving, the dying, for the COVID situation around the world and all the uncertainty, pain, struggle and its effects, for those caring for others and for those sitting with those who struggle. We pray that those who are persecuted or abused or neglected may find green shoots of hope, may find, be able to reach out or have somebody reach out to them, may find solace in the darkness, may be heard and known and seen. We pray for new life and hope and possibility. As we come on this Christmas Eve, we give thanks for celebrations and gatherings, for people coming together, whether virtually or in person, for those going the extra mile to support and help others, for those working and serving, for those who won't get a break. For those who have been busy making arrangements and plans and putting things together for surprises, the innocence of childhood, wondering again at the blessing of gifts and joy and possibility. And in a moment of quiet, we bring our prayers of thanks and petition and wondering. And as we come to the close of this year, we give thanks again on this Friday evening for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in this synod in Nottinghamshire. We pray for our moderator, deputy moderator and all those who serve through the life of the synod and through the lives of our local churches. And for all carol services and midnight services and Christmas Day celebrations. We give thanks for this community that it has become a supportive and encouraging place, a place of worship and of care. And we pray with Liz for Ryan and Emma and Leon, with Prince for Cheryl, with Andy for Mick and for Liz and Ruth as they care for him, with Judith for Catherine with Onkatea. We pray with all those who lead our evening prayers, Geoffrey and Jane and Tom and Alison and Onkatea. We give thanks for their dedication and their commitment. We pray for the Reverend, Reverend Graham and Vera Mascari and we think of all who grieve, particularly those who grieve for the Reverend Eric Allen, 
the Reverend Vernon Broomfield Payne and for David Scott. And all of these prayers we wrap up in the words that Jesus gave us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Go safely into the night and may tomorrow bring you new insights, a reminder of God with us, Emmanuel. And may you see and experience and know the love of God in the celebrations, in the people around you and in the silence. May the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace today and every day. Amen.